Hello everyone, I'm Amy Post and this is the Manobite Sound Bites. Are you ready to get started with lead scoring in HubSpot? If so, Serena has a step-by-step -step guide to take you through it. Scenario A. You've been working on your inbound marketing strategy and your efforts have paid off. You've been watching the leads roll in from several channels, but after you give yourself and your team a well-deserved pat on the back, you have to figure out what to do with them. And scenario B. You've been doing inbound for a while, but you hear from a coworker that sales doesn't think the leads you're sending along are worth their time. Either of those sound familiar? You're not alone. Defining what makes a lead qualified is a difficult task, but if you're a HubSpot user, you're in luck. Leveraging the lead scoring tool makes it easier. Lead scoring is a great method of sorting your leads between those just getting familiar with their brand, those who are candidates for nurturing, and those who are ready to talk to sales. Used in conjunction with the buyer's journey stages and your buyer personas, lead scoring can help you focus and personalize your marketing efforts. And the better qualified your leads are, the more efficient your sales team can be with their time. First, you must prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. When it, trying to determine whether a lead is qualified or not, the first step is to prioritize. After all, a contact who has checked out your website once is probably less engaged with your company than someone who has opened, read, clicked through several emails. And that's just the small stuff. One tried and true way to prioritize attributes that make a lead qualified is to look at historical data of current and past customers. What did they do before a salesperson reached out to them? What forms did they fill out and which resources did they read? It's also important to consider the demographics of a well-qualified lead. If your company sells primarily to medical professionals, you might rank someone whose title is doctor more highly than a Mr. or Miss. This is another great place to check back on the information of current or past customers, as well as using your buyer personas. Anything that's relevant to whether or not this lead might buy can be used to score them. Think industry, company name, size, revenue, location, age, and more. Next, break out the calculator. Getting started with lead scoring means you have to do a little bit of math. And if you're anything like me, hearing that might have elicited a little bit of a frown, but don't worry, we'll walk you through it. Start out by calculating your customer to lead conversion rate. With a time scale that works for you, say from when you started implementing inbound strategies or in the last year, take your total new customers and divide it by total leads generated. Then multiply that resulting number by 100 to get your percentage. Then, choose some attributes that make a contact highly qualified. Then, calculate the close rate for that attribute with the same time scale and basic formula, customers over leads times 100. Now you've got a direct comparison. So if your overall close rate is 10% and the close rate on a certain attribute is 30%, you'll want to rate that attribute as about three times more valuable than a baseline attribute. To return to the earlier example, if visiting a website once is worth one point, Clicking through a few emails might be worth three. Next, you've got to do your research. So far, I've been talking a lot about gathering stored data from past customers, but there are more resources that you can leverage to fine tune your lead scoring. For instance, you might consider reaching out to your customers and talking to them about what made them decide to purchase from your company. Data doesn't always give you the full picture. Your sales department spends practically all of their time figuring out what drives people towards a sale so ask them, what resources do they use to convince their prospects? If you have leads in your funnel who have accessed those resources, they're probably more qualified than those who haven't. And finally, check out your attribution reports if you haven't already. See where leads are coming from and which sources are generating leads with high close rates. If people coming in from social are closing more frequently than those from organic, you want to give more points to social engagement. Once you've done your research, it's time to embrace the negative points. Lead scoring can help you easily distinguish which of your leads are worth pursuing, but it can also sort out which ones are probably never going to be a good fit. While it's certainly more exciting to watch leads accumulate positive points, don't be afraid to assign negative points to actions or demographic information that mean a lead is less likely to become a customer. For example, if you have a page or form for people seeking job opportunities, they're probably not that interested in purchasing your products or services. Or say your company manufactures furniture for commercial use and a contact indicated they were looking to buy for their home. Chances are that lead probably won't be worth your salespeople's time. In the search for your most qualified leads in your basket, 
be sure to define the bad as well as the good. To do this effectively, you may need to use the test feature. At this point, you may be unsure if the point values you're brainstorming are even going to work. Thankfully, with HubSpot, there's no need to guess. After setting up your positive and negative points, you can test the system with the handy test contact feature. Try using a variety of contacts, such as a current or past customer, someone who's currently in the sales funnel, or even a brand new lead to see what numbers you generate. If you find that there's not that much difference between a customer and someone who's only read a couple blogs, you should definitely reevaluate some point values. Everyone's lead scoring system is going to be different, so as long as you can determine appropriate benchmarks for marketing qualified leads, or MQLs, you should be golden. And finally, ready, set, automate. Of course, all that work doesn't mean anything if you don't use it. And while you can manually check contact lead scores, HubSpot isn't called automation software for nothing. You can integrate your lead scoring system into workflows to send a salesperson a notification when a contact has passed the MQL threshold, for example, or put someone into a nurture campaign once they've engaged a few times. Or, conversely, you can set up a workflow to remove poor fit leads from email lists and change their lifecycle status. Options are endless. And for our last lead scoring tip, just like everything you do with inbound, always analyze, adjust, and repeat. What works now may change in the future, and as you gather more results from your efforts, you may find tweaks here and there. With a little planning and work, you can set up a lead scoring system that makes your company's marketing and sales machine hum a lot smoother. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be sure to check out the rest of our podcasts for more tips on how you can grow your business.